Hello and welcome back to Patrick Boyle on Finance. So today's video is all about floor trading or pit trading and whether it makes sense or not in this day and age. Some financial exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange and some other commodities exchanges combine electronic trading and face-to-face -face trading by humans in trading pits. Then the coronavirus pandemic struck, making floor trading unsafe, and so it stopped for a while and has just restarted. Over the last couple of days, a number of studies have come out arguing the pros and cons of floor trading. The New York Stock Exchange partially reopened its famous Wall Street trading floor this week, with around a quarter of brokers returning after a two-month shutdown caused by the coronavirus crisis. Roughly a hundred brokers, mostly from small firms, were assigned desks behind plexiglass screens. There were markers then designating where each person is allowed to work, and so on. Traders were prohibited from using public transportation to get to work and required to sign papers indemnifying the exchange if they caught coronavirus. They are required to follow the exchange's health regulations. Designated market makers who can intervene to smooth out volatile trading markets uh, will continue to operate working remotely. Traditionally, floor trading was the best way to trade stocks and bonds, but over time this system was superseded by traders submitting electronic orders to a central exchange with an algorithmic matching engine to match up buyers and sellers. This is much faster and more precise than pit trading, which is why it's become the main way that stocks, options and commodities are traded globally. Still, there are some throwbacks, including a few commodities exchanges and the New York Stock Exchange, which combines electronic trading with some pit trading. The New York Stock Exchange, several hundred traders and brokers are the face of Wall Street and form a crucial part of the New York Stock Exchange brand, one of the best known brands in the financial industry. But given that computers dominate stock trading just about everywhere else in around the world and play a pretty big role at NICE as well, it's reasonable to ask whether the people milling around the trading floor at number 11 Wall Street in Manhattan are worth keeping around. Critics argue that it's simply a facade for television cameras, a kind of capitalist Disneyland. The proponents of trading floors, on the other hand, argue that they provide a valuable service by funneling trades into one place and allowing traders to execute human judgment about how to execute these trades. While the trading pits were closed for around two months, the New York Stock Exchange was, of course, still trading stocks electronically, as it usually does, but without the added human activity that the New York Stock Exchange touts as a benefit of its exchange. This is an obvious natural experiment. When the trading floor closes for two months and only the computers can trade, is the New York Stock Exchange better or worse at trading stocks than it is in ordinary times? That is a complicated question. There are different measures of exchange quality, and of course closing the trading floor is not the only thing that has happened over the last two extremely volatile months, but there is an argument that things are better. An academic study released last week named Vestigial Tales Floor Brokers at the Close in Modern Electronic Markets by Edwin Hugh and Dermot Murphy found that the New York Stock Exchange's crucial 4 p.m. auctions, which determine the end of day prices for thousands of stocks, ran much more smoothly after the big board closed its floor to curtail the spread of the coronavirus. The New York Stock Exchange, of course, has questioned the study's conclusions. Brokers on the New York Stock Exchange floor have a special advantage at the end of the trading day, when the final price of a stock is determined. By law, brokers in the United States must buy or sell stocks on the exchange that has the best price during the trading day. That could be on any one of the many electronic markets that exist. However, at market close, nearly all trading returns to the exchange that lists the stock. The reason the closing auction is so important is because it determines the day's official closing price, 
passive funds which are tied to indexes are really concerned with minimizing their tracking error and are driving more and more trading into the closing auction. So the majority of the day's volume actually occurs at the close in these closing auctions. This is because the index funds really only want to trade at one price and that is the closing price. The humans on the New York Stock Exchange floor have a special advantage. Brokers can use what's called the de-quote system, which gives them almost 15 minutes of extra time to tweak or add stock orders at the end of trading. The only way to access the de-quote system is through a floor broker with a handheld device. Market structure experts have been saying for years that this could be automated and done without trading pits and human traders. When the New York Stock Exchange closed its floor, firms could no longer use the de-quote system. In the study, the researchers found that closing the floor made the end-of-day process more orderly. The New York Stock Exchange's indicative auction prices, which are meant to give investors a sense of closing price for stocks, grew more accurate. The gap between the 3.55 p.m. indicative price and the actual closing price narrowed by about 1%. The study found that traders also tended to join the auctions earlier, potentially damping big moves at the end of the day. Before the trading pits were closed for two months, only 46% of NICE closing auction volume was matched or paired off between buyers and sellers by 3.55 p.m. That jumped to 74% after the closure, the study found. The New York Stock Exchange told Bloomberg that this flawed study ignores real-world investor outcomes in their statement. A second study by Brogard, Ringenberg and Roche argued that markets got worse without floor traders. Using a difference in differences analysis, they argue that floor traders are important contributors to market quality, even in the age of algorithmic trading. The suspension of floor trading leads to higher effective spreads, volatility and pricing errors. Consistent with theoretical predictions about automation, the effects are strongest during and immediately following the opening auction when complexity is highest. Their findings suggest that human floor traders improve market quality. One problem with the coronavirus natural experiment in financial markets is that the effect of coronavirus on stock markets is not just that it shut down the trading floor. The pandemic also caused a general economic and financial crisis. And in such a scenario, you might expect volatility and bid-ask spreads to be higher. The author's argument, though, is that the New York Stock Exchange stocks had bigger increases in spreads and volatility than NASDAQ stocks did over the same period, which always traded purely electronically. And this suggests to them that the shutdown of the trading floor and not just the economic harm of the pandemic is what made trading less efficient. Now, when I started out trading futures many years ago, I used to have to call in my trades to the pits in Chicago. You'd have to call a guy who traded on the floor. And in my opinion, it was just a horribly inefficient process. And basically the day I was given access to an electronic trading platform, I never looked back. Let me know in the comment section below if you feel pit trading helps markets function more efficiently. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Bye.